Hello and welcome to another video. This is part two of my videos where we've been looking at the Unreal Live Link plugin for Autodesk Maya. In the first video, we went through the basics of the plugin and how to use it and start streaming basic data types. In this video, we're going to focus specifically this time on characters and animations. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we can uh, stream uh, characters through this Unreal Maya live link. Uh, now in Unreal, I've got a very simple character here and I just downloaded this scan 3D people pack from the uh, Unreal Marketplace. It was completely free. And there's a number of different characters in here. Some of them are posed and some of them are actually rigged. In other words, they've got like a skeletal mesh with a rig in it, uh, et cetera. And we can just uh, see this asset here that I've got in my uh, scene. And now all I've done from this point is then take this skeletal mesh and then export it out of Unreal via FBX. And then I've loaded that into Maya. And here it is uh, in its raw form. So I've not changed anything here at all. This is just the exact same FBX uh, as it comes in. I've changed my axes to Z up uh, for this part of the demonstration, uh, but it shouldn't really make a difference really at the end of the day. Um, so we've got a full hierarchy here uh, that works. And so now once we're in Maya, we can do whatever we want to, including um, building a more elaborate control ring. But let's just deal with the basics right now on how to establish a link between these two scenes so that when we move our character in Maya, it will update in real time in Unreal. So the first thing to do is to establish that link between Maya and Unreal. And uh, just like anything, really, we just go to uh, Unreal Live Link and then we add the selection that we want to stream. So I'm going to just choose actually the top of the character now because it's in its own group. And then, of course, you've got the uh, the root of the skeleton here. So I'm just going to choose the actual top node and just click Add Selection. So that will now appear in my uh, box and of course now it's been changed to full hierarchy which is um, relevant because it's a skeletal mesh or a skeleton rig so now if we go into unreal uh, bring up the live link to listen for our my bus there it is live link and you know the cameras come across and there there's the rig so that's got that working so what do we do now in unreal well the first stage the most simplest way of doing this is just literally opening up the skeletal mesh in in the editor here and then to change in the preview controller so up here in the upper uh, right under the preview uh, scene we can we can change the preview controller so if we just click this we can now choose live link preview controller and then it will ask us for the live link subject name which of course is going to be our rig so then we'll just choose that and that's literally it uh, now if i just move this off to one side so now if I was to choose uh, a bone here in uh, Maya, if I rotate it, it's now moving in real time in Unreal. So that's really it. It's recognized the skeleton and that's it. There's also an option here under this preview to enable camera sync. So if I turn this on, it will sync to the camera in Maya, which of course gives it a bit of a funky look. But, um, you know, ultimately, if you want to have this sync, you can do. It's entirely really down to you. I'm not really bothered about it personally, so I'm not really going to use it. It's a lot more flexible to be able to move the camera around uh, independently uh, in this context anyway. So we've got the basics there. That's the, 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 the basics of uh, linking the uh, skeletal mesh. So when we move it in Maya, it's going to move in Unreal. But that's just in the context of this editor. Um, how do you then make it move inside the actual viewport? So um, you want to be able to see it here uh, along with anything else in your scene. But to do that, you need to create an animation blueprint. You don't actually use the, um, the skeletal mesh here. So right click in uh, the folder of your character or any other folder and choose uh, animation and want animation blueprint. And here, you need to choose the name of the skeleton. Well, I happen to know that this these characters here are using the um, they're using the Unreal Four skeleton. So um, there's a few things here to list because I've got metahumans in this uh, Unreal project as well. So that's why that's coming up. 
Um, but really, uh, we can see here where the preview is. It's in the scan 3D people folder. That's where it is. So that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to OK that. So that's got our blueprint here. We can name it to whatever we want. If we double click it, we've got uh, the preview here in the editor as well. Now, the first thing uh, we need to do before anything else is we need to add a live link pose so that it will drive the output pose and animation from our uh, blueprint. So we tab inside the uh, graph and then just do a filter search for live and just move down here, live link pose, and add that in there. And then we just take the output and plug it into that. And then in the box here, it says live link subject name. We just choose the same rig that is coming through as part of our my stream. There we go. And that really should be it. Now, of course, it won't update straight away because, of course, we haven't compiled it. And the preview here will be out of date. So let's just compile all that and save it. And now that all should be working. So now that's all done. Let's just close this. And now um, we can just drag this into our viewport here like so. Uh, it's faced the wrong way around. Let's just rotate him around. So now um, you, when you try and rotate, nothing happens. And the reason for that is there's another setting to change in the skeletal mesh. So as part of the skeletal mesh component, you need to uh, activate a function to update it live in the editor. So um, just, do a, just do a search for the details and just put update. And under the skeletal mesh section, there is uh, an option here that says update animation in editor. So just turn this to on, and when you do that, you can now preview your animation uh, in Unreal. So the next stage of this point is that, well, okay, I've got the Unreal 4 mannequin, which is okay. Uh, it's a bit broken at the moment, uh, but um, you know, my animation works. But I really want to see it on this character. I don't want to see it on, on this guy because that's not going to be relevant for me. Well, all you need to do now is change the skeletal mesh because at the moment it's pointing to the Unreal 4 mannequin. So if you were to just click this now and choose one of the other characters as part of the pack. So this was the character I used, Manuel Rigged. If I change him over, it will now change. So um, this also now works. So that's the basics of the preview um, animation, really, using the My Live link. It's just a... It's actually really fairly simple. Um, but now that you've got this uh, working, the the key thing is now is now the link works and you've got the skeletons talking to each other. You can now do quite a bit in Maya because essentially what it's doing is um, you can choose anything now to drive this rig and it'll all be live. So now you can start using human IK, you can start doing a, your own control rig, and you can actually start animating live in Maya and it will all be streamed live into uh, Unreal. With this basic example and the knowledge we've just uh, learned, we can now apply this to our bistro scene and start maybe implementing some characters into that context so that we start to build up the workflow that we're trying to aim for. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to uh, bring in this character into my Bistro Maya scene, and then I want to stream this character over to the same character that I've got in Unreal. And I also want to ideally uh, apply some mocap to this as well and maybe change some things around. So what I've done here is, again, I've got the same skeletal mesh uh, character exported from Unreal. This is the scene I've got. And what I've done is I've, I've rigged this up in Human IK inside Maya. Now, I could use any one of the example assets, uh, the, the mocap that comes with Maya, but it's okay, but it's very basic. And I want to have uh, more flexibility and choice over what I want to use. And I've decided to use Mixamo because there's a whole free repository of mocap there, and there's some really good stuff. Uh, so what I've done, I've also brought in a Mixamo character as well, which is uh, this one here. So I've brought in the T-Pose. I've added this uh, into Human IK as well. It's really easy. It's all configured perfectly uh, uh, fine. Uh, and I've now got this Mixamo rig essentially driving my Unreal character. And now what that means is I can now just import some Mixamo mocap and it will drop directly straight onto the rig and then that will drive my unreal character so if i now just pull in a piece of mocap uh this just imports 
go to where my Mixamo stuff is and choose um, idle and just import. That just drops straight onto my Mixamo character and that's now driving my Unreal character. So I've got that already working. It's all now worked. Now I could decide to bake it all down and export as an FBX and then import that into Unreal, but I don't want to do that. I want to have some flexibility still. And again, my animation pipeline could be all in Maya. And all I want to do is preview and stream the asset into Unreal for whatever purpose that, that I choose. So now I've got this established. What I'm going to do now is going to go back to the uh, bistro scene in Maya and then bring in this scene, uh, this Maya scene, and then I can bring mocap into that scene. And then from that scene, that's the one that's got the live link established with uh, Unreal, I should be able to stream any animation over uh, live. Okay, so we now understand about how to connect and link uh, our character from Maya into Unreal. I've now gone back to the bistro scene, and what we're going to do now is do the same workflow, but this time in the context of the scene or the level or the shot that we've been working on. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the whole process all over again, but I'll just recap where I currently am. So in the bistro scene in Maya, I've imported my Maya scene that had my um, Unreal character being uh, driven by Mixamo. And I've placed the character down here in the street, uh, which is where I want him to be. And we've got that blocked into our shot. Still in the T-pose at the moment because I haven't actually loaded any animations in. And when you bring it into your scene in Maya, there's a global transform. So everything's under a group here. So I've not moved that. That that actual transform has stayed in place, zero, zero, zero. And uh, the local transform is applied to the, um, the Mixamo rig, which is what I've got on a separate layer here. So that's what I'm using to move the character around because the Mixamo character is what we're using to drive the Unreal character. I've also established a live link between the scene in Maya and also our scene in Unreal here. So I've got everything all connected up, our cameras, lights, etc, uh, etc. Et so that's all good to go. Uh, I've also got my animation blueprint all wired up as well with all the right pose and everything. All we need to do is essentially uh, plug in uh, the animation of course i've got the two connected up which is why my character is all the way in the distance here because i've transformed it in maya to the place where i need it to be in part of the level so that's all kind of fine so now if i was to actually drag this character into my unreal scene of course it's going to be somewhere in the level here but of course because i've got a, work, a global transform if i just set these to zero zero and zero you'll see our characters uh, in place there right where we should be. So we've got everything all connected up and all uh, in situ and all in the right context. Everything all kind of works fine. Uh, again, we can always just come out of here in Unreal with a camera, select our Cine camera actor, and again, we can see our characters all set up. So everything is all fine. And again, I could preview both here if I want to. Um, I've got the live... Uh, scene working so again if i want to move this character along here uh, i need to actually just update the character here to make sure it could be a uh, scene update animation editor there we go that's it so now with that option just selected now when i move it in maya it will move in unreal now once i've got that set up and i'm happy with the basic blockage of my character now i need to load some animation so all I need to do now is just go to file import, pull in a piece of mocap from Mixamo and it should drop stri directly straight onto the rig. And then we should see our character move in Maya. And then also uh, that will be then updated live in Unreal. So I've now imported my animation into Maya and now we can see it's dropped onto our character and our character in Unreal is also updated. So I've just maybe give myself a little bit more screen real estate, uh, make the camera larger. So now when I scrub the timeline, our character moves in real time. I'm hoping the frame rate comes through okay on this recording because I'm perhaps 
pushing my video card memory to the absolute limit with both scenes being open at the same time but um when i'm scrubbing the timeline it's 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 absolutely in sync in real time and of course i've got a slight problem there where perhaps my character's brushing too close to this bollard so it's like that's okay i can make that adjustment live and just move him off just to the side slightly like like so and again we get a nice shadow come over the character there in Maya and we can see that shadow with a lot more clarity and visual fidelity in Unreal which is exactly what we want because if Unreal is going to be our final pixel or our final output this is where you want to see it of course the only thing left now with the blueprint of course is that it, we've got the Unreal Mannequin, so what we need to do now is just swap this guy over so that we're actually, uh, the skeletal mesh is actually the character that we wish it to. So in the details for the blueprint, go to the skeletal mesh section where it says Unreal Mannequin, scroll down and choose the character that I had. And there we go. And then just flip back to our camera, I'll pin the preview open. And there we go, we've got our character in situ in Unreal and then just scrub the timeline in my just to make sure that's fitting pretty well. Still a bit close to that bollard there so again we can just quickly move that guy to that one side and there we go. I can perhaps just go to my layers now and turn off the Mixamo character so I don't need that. And now we've got a full animation preview in Maya being streamed live into our scene in Unreal. Now, of course, now we've got this connection established, I can import any animation I want, as long as it comes from Mixmo, because that's what's driving my character. I can import any Mixmo uh, mocap I want into my character in Maya, and then that will automatically be uh, updated live into Unreal because uh, we're streaming that data live directly from Maya into Unreal and then I can also choose to bring in multiple clips of animation maybe put it into Maya's time editor to do some non some non-linear animation and I can sync all that up in Unreal not only via the animation but also also with, with the time code as well so this is a really good way of working if you're looking to preview scenes and shots and cameras uh, from Maya into Unreal Okay, so that's really how you use the new uh, Maya Unreal Live Link plugin from Autodesk. Um, it's early days for this plugin. Autodesk have only really just started to uh, take over its development, uh, but they've made some improvements already to it, especially with the installation and the, the basic workflow. And also with adding extra little features like synchronizing the time code. And I think that's gonna be really important to many people especially if they're uh, working in areas like virtual production. So yeah, I really hope that they continue to, to develop this. And if there's any updates, then certainly I'll try and get some more videos out there already. Uh, I'll include uh, as much information as possible in the description below, particularly around my hardware specs, also where I got some of the assets from, and so on and so on. So I hope that's really useful to you as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.